Hello? Hi, is this Jerry? Yes. All right, well, let me do the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very excited to welcome, for the second time to our radio show, actress Jerry Jewell. You're on the air live with Terry and Tiffany. Welcome back, Jerry. Thank you. Thank you. Do you know it's been six years since you've been on the show? Where have you been? <laughs> Years has it really? Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Wow, what does time go when you're having such a good time, huh? And, and you know, <laughs> it, it's been six years that I've been heartbroken because on that show, one of the things that, that you revealed to the audience is that you're a lesbian. And I was going to ask you out on a date after the interview, <laughs> and you totally destroyed m my dreams of, of I dating. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> My line was so. My line was so. You have cerebral palsy and you're a lesbian too. Which I mean, it's hard either way in society. <laughs> the way society is so crazy and accepts people. But, but yeah, and 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 I just because I love you and I want to marry you and it just blew my fancy right out of the water. You know, you can still love me. Yes, I do, and I, I do. I definitely do. Wow. So, how are you? I'm doing well. I I. Uh, did the Deadwood movie, which aired in May, which was really an incredible experience. I don't know if you got a chance to see it, did you? Not yet, but I definitely want to, because I'm actually a big fan of Westerns. Oh, okay. Did you, did you follow the series? Yes, the series, yes, but I haven't seen the movie yet. Uh, it's definitely worth yeah. getting HBO for. Definitely got to do that. In, in fact, it was cool, if I'm not mistaken... Because uh, we had talked about Deadwood when you were on six years ago, and this, of course, was before the movie. Did you not film Deadwood, at least the original series, at the Gene Autry Ranch? I don't think the, it's the Melody Ranch, the Gene Autry Ranch. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Oh, okay. I I didn't realize it was one and the same. Then yesterday, yes, we did. The reason I mentioned that is because after we had done our interview when you were on six years ago. You appeared uh, at the ranch for the uh, Santa Clarita Western Days things, and I was going to go there to see oh, you, and I missed yeah. you. Yeah. I did get to see oh your braces. Oh, my God, I remember that. Yeah, I did get to see your braces. They had your braces on display. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I mean, we want to talk about, you know, for those who don't know the story about how you got involved with Deadwood, but before we go back to that story, because it's a great story, uh, how did the movie come about? I mean, it had been, you know, 13 years since Deadwood ended. Uh, when and how did you first hear about it? Well, it, it, it had been trying to get off the ground for quite some time and just got delayed, 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 and a lot of people stopped believing it was ever going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Powers first passing was so sad yeah. because it would have been a lot earlier and David Mills had to change the whole script and start all over again after Powers passed. So it's a miracle that we even did it, that we finally got it off the ground. And especially and in the fact that Westerns aren't as made anymore as they used to be. Oh, yeah, of course, and it's a period piece, and they had to age everybody 10 years, because if it takes place 10 years after the series ended. So, it was pretty amazing, and truthfully, um, I had a lot of problems walking last, I guess, about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and I couldn't walk very far, I couldn't stand longer than about a minute without going to my knees in chronic pain. Mm. And I had tried everything, I mean, epidurals, nerve blocks, blah, 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 blah. And I knew I needed surgery. So, and I knew, I was one of the believers. I knew that Deadwood was going to be a movie. I just didn't know when. Mm -hmm. So I contacted the surgeon and I said, look, I, I have to do a movie. 
So you gotta get me walking and standing again. <laughs> you, you have no choice here. And do the most any day surgery you could think of, just get my mobility back. And I had the surgery in July and he told me that I would be back to my normal in about a month. Well, it got to be the middle of September, and oh. I still was a wheelchair user, walker, mm -hmm. physical therapy, occupational therapy, and I got the script, the Deadwood movie. Oh. And, and it was emailed to me, and I was just, oh my God, there's no way I can do this. So I called production, I wanted to speak to David Milch, and they informed me that he wasn't taking any calls, can we leave a message? And I said, yeah. Tell him that you had dual cars and that I had back surgery and I, you know, I'm still a part-time wheelchair user, walker, I can't stand very well, my pain level is through the roof. Um, tell him that he has my blessings to recast Jewel. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was dead silence. And she said, are you sure you want me to tell him that? And I said, yes, because it's the truth. And he deserves to know the truth. Yeah. And he, he called me the next day and he said, Jerry, I got your message. And I said, yeah. And I want you to know something. There's only one jewel and it's you. Wow. And I don't care if I have to get a wheelchair accessible trailer if hair and makeup comes to you. If we have to hire a driver, if I have to change the script, you're going to do Jewel. And tears just came down my face, and I said, oh, my God, you really believe in me? And he said, I believe in you from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Mm -hmm. And there's a very and special I'm reason for the, why he wanted you to. We'll get into that after you finish your story here. Yeah, and he gave me, the, he gave me a gift. You know, yeah. he challenged me to challenge myself because I didn't think I could do it. And I did it. Yeah. And I was so proud of myself. It was it was the hardest role I've ever had to do pain wise. But I did it. Well it, and it's a great thing. It's a great thing that this this man who's so important in the industry respected you so much because there there's so many things that could have gone wrong in a western. He could have wanted you to ride a horse. Uh, or, you know, or anything, <laughs> but but he understood. <laughs> he he understood all your disabilities, and, and I I guess the way you got into Deadwood is, is you went to the pharmacy, right? How did that happen? Well, you know, I for some reason every time I have surgery, I bump into David Milch <laughs> 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 because. <laughs> I had neck surgery back in 99, yeah. and I was getting Botox in my neck for chronic pain. I was standing in line in 2002. I still wasn't recovered from neck surgery yet. And I honestly, at that time, I thought my career was over. I thought, there's no way I can act again or do comedy or anything. I mean, my self-esteem was really compromised from all that surgery. and. Uh, I was standing in line for Botox, you know, to pick it up to take it to the doctor to inject it in my neck. Mm -hmm. And this man turned around and said, oh my God, you're Jerry Jewell. Mm. And I said, yeah, I am. He said, well, I'm a huge fan of yours. And I said, well, thank you. He said, uh, God, you've made me laugh. You've inspired me. But I haven't seen you on TV in a long time. What are you doing with your life now? Yeah. I said, Botox. <laughs> 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 and he sees me laugh, and he said, come on, you want a television series? And I said, what? Do you want a television series? I said, look, this is the pharmacy. <laughs> 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 and he said, in case you don't recognize me, my name is David Milch, and my eyes got wide and I said, oh my God, David Mills, the executive producer of NYPD Blue? And he <laughs> said, yes. And I said, well, Mr. Mills, I'm flattered that you believe in me and my work, but I wouldn't make a really good cop. <laughs> 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 and, 
And he said, no, 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 I just signed a contract with HBO. I'm doing a new Western called Deadwood. You want to do a Western? And I looked up as far as my titanium neck would let me, and I said, God, you have a quirky sense of humor. <laughs> I mean, I, I am standing here with a titanium neck, depending on Botox, cerebral palsy, and David Mills wants me to ride a horse. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the only thing he could find to write on that morning was a prescription pad for an antidepressant. Oh. So he <laughs> so he wrote me his phone number and told me to call him, and the rest is history. And I was the first person cast on Deadwood by David, the very first one before anybody else. I, I heard you on the Allison Arngrim show, who was also on the show, and I love her too. And there was two. Oh, I, love I know. And and there was two parts of that show that that I, you said a few things. You had me rolled on the floor. The first one was when you told the story that you told here about how you were trying to figure out how you was going to do this movie because you know you just had surgery, and and you had said on the air, and we swear here too, Jerry. You were like, "How the fuck am I going to do this movie?" <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't sure I could say that word on this show. Yes, yes you can. <laughs> you can, and and you did on Allison's too, and and she wasn't surprised. I would be surprised. But the the uh, the other part is your only great disappointment is you didn't get a chance to do your great big nude scene. <laughs> yeah. Well, anyway, I guess it's a blessing in disguise. I think I think. <laughs> I think the fantasy is always better than the reality. <laughs> <laughs> so, in in what way would you have thought you'd have done a nude scene? I mean, what what happened there? Well, when I was on the series, they had a contract that they put in my trailer for me to sign after I was on the show, asking me to release any scenes of nudity and sexual simulation. Mm. And and I sat there with that contract in my trailer for about at least a couple of hours before I signed it. You know, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, um, let's see, my mom is no longer with us, so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> except, ex <laughs> except your cat would be ashamed of you. <laughs> 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 she does not like it when I get on the phone with anybody. <laughs> no, they don't understand it. <laughs> Julia, come on. <laughs> oh, I can't believe this. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. We have two cats. Both are rescues, and they pretty much run our household. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, this one, she she's very loud, as you can tell. <laughs> she doesn't she doesn't care. You've been on the facts live. She's like, get off the damn phone, okay? <laughs> I, I know, I know, and that's what I love about it. There's, there's no. Um, the right. So, so anyway, <laughs> you, you got this contract, and they said that they wanted your signature, saying you would agree to do a nude scene and yeah. sexual simulation. And and I finally wrestled with all the rationalizations and reasons why I should do it, and I signed it. And I, I felt so brave. I was like, oh my god, this is art. This is this is not porno, this is art, this is incredible. I will be the first person with a disability to be nude on cable television. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to rationalize it, and then they never, they never did it. Oh. They, they backed out. Yeah. Every single script I got, I'm going through the script. Okay, where's my new scene? Where's my new scene? <laughs> I've been on plenty of sets. I've been on plenty of sets where actors have just improv. You should have just took your clothes off and see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! No, I'm kind. Of, I'm kind of glad it didn't happen. I mean, I thought perhaps it might happen yeah. in the movie, and I was glad it didn't happen then either. Well, you said uh, you told Allison uh, that you were concerned because 
you know, being associated with the Facts Alive, it has pretty much a family following, and you were worried people would kind of freak out, right? If it happened. Oh, yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course, because I have that following, that G-rated following, but, you know, like, like, <laughs> well, what can I say? Mm -hmm. I, I actually did a Cheech and Chong film before I even did Back of Life, but luckily, I got cut out and it never, I got film credit in my SAG card, so to my chagrin, that never happened and it would have been really kind of weird for the Cheech and Chong movie to come out the same time Back to Life did. Yeah, right. but see, if, if you would have gotten paid in another way, you wouldn't have to get on Botox because they would supply you with, <laughs> with, with <laughs> all, all kinds of stuff. And also, I was also going to say, Jerry, it, it wouldn't have mattered if you did a Cheech and Chong movie in the facts and then the facts of life because Charlotte Ray was in the movie Hair. So, you know, she didn't really have anything to say about that. Yeah. No, I wanted to ask <laughs> oh, you. Oh, that's right. Yes, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's true. Charlotte was a hippie. I wanted to, to mention because, uh, like, last year Charlotte Ray left us. And, and we tried really hard to get her on, almost got her, and it was so sad she couldn't come on. I know she thought highly of you. I mean, how did you feel when you heard about Charlotte? Oh, I, I, I love Charlotte dearly, and I'm very blessed to have spent a lot of quality time with her in the last years of her life. I even interviewed her for Ability Magazine, mm. and I had so much respect for her, and I, I miss her. I, I wish I had gotten to know her better in the early years, yeah. but, you know, I was a little kid. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> Well, you know, I, was she, like, pretty opening to you on the set? Because it poises the question, because I actually watched your first episode on The Facts of Life, and the, the girls in the show, okay, were all a little nervous because, you know, sometimes people get around somebody that has handicaps. I know, because I'm a little handicapped myself, and people get awkward, and they didn't know what to say, and I, one of them said, well, my relatives got arthritis or whatever, which was funny, because, you know, they're trying to compare themselves <laughs> to you. But in real life, did any of the the actresses, the girls, feel awkward around you? Well, you, there was no awkwardness on the show. I mean, those girls and I got along fine. In fact, I was closest out of all the girls to Lisa Welcher. Mm -hmm. And we we even became roommates. We were roommates for about a year. Oh. And, uh, yeah, because I was, it, was a, it was a weird deal because I was... 23 when I was cast on Facts of Life, and Lisa was the oldest at the time. She had just barely turned 18, I think, and Charlotte was way older, and the other girls were way younger. So age-wise, it was, it was hard to make tight friendships because the age differences were so bad. Yeah. But, but Lisa and I clipped, and I... I, I was very blessed to be on that show. I mean, it was a groundbreaking role, and uh, it shaped my career from, from that point on. Now, I, I heard talk of, of some kind of a reunion movie or a redo with, with different cast. Have you heard anything about that? Has anybody said anything to you about that? I've heard a little bit, but not big time. No, I... I I really don't know where that's going. There was a lot of talk about it at one point, and then it got quiet, so I don't know. Well, you never know. Deadwood came back in 13 years, so, I mean, you know, that, that would be cool. <laughs> I mean, your character on that show was so iconic. Uh, I guess it, it even led to, didn't some TV shows parody your character? Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure that if they did, they would bring me back. I've done several things with the girls. We did the home show. We did the TV Land Awards. Mm -hmm. We did the Paley Center for the um, the bonus DVD and the box set. So I, I'm sure that I would come back. That I, I just don't know how they would bring it back. No. Or, or would they even hire all new actresses to play to play a whole new cast? I don't know. Right. 
Now, you know, Jerry, you, you, you missed the boat because you could have just mass marketed those T-shirts that you're that one T-shirt that you're infamous for wearing on the Facts of Life. <laughs> and you would have never had to work again. That T-shirt was actually what led to Norman Lear kind of like, I mean, you were discovered by Norman by doing comedy, right? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. So how, and, how did that that, that T-shirt, by the way, what? The original one still does exist, and one of the ones that I wore on Fact of Life is still exists. In fact, it's on display at the Hollywood Museum mm. on on Highland. And the thing about that T-shirt, was, which was so amazing, is that I didn't have a lot of money. I was I was a, a starving comic, and I only could afford to make one T-shirt. So. I wore that for two years during comedy again and again. It has coffee stains, it has body <laughs> odor stains. <laughs> it, it's just so bad. So by the time I got packs of life, they wanted that t shirt and they looked at it and go, No, we'll make a new one. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so Wardrobe bought me this new t shirt of my original joke. And I looked at it and I started laughing and, and she said, what is so funny? And she said, because this is the first time I've ever figured out how to spell cerebral palsy correctly. <laughs> oh, you misspelled it? <laughs> and, no, on my own t-shirt it spelled wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my God, I had cerebral palsy for 23 years and I didn't know how to spell it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love your joke, and in the series, I believe it was in that episode, you were complaining that you had to pay 25 cents a letter to get <laughs> the spelling on the shirt. You said it would have been cheaper if you would have had polio. Yeah, that was a, that was a good line. And I could have saved 30 cents if I had spelled terrible pasta correctly. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's no E in palsy, just say no. Wow. <laughs> Well, you know, it, it's amazing, and we're so blessed to know that, that Norman Lear is kind of on a resurgence because he's redoing some of his uh, series. I, I mean, they're doing them live. Maybe they'll do Facts of Life someday. But uh, he, I, I guess he's wanting and trying to campaigning for you to get a star in the Walk of Fame. Is that right? Yes, that is true. That is true. And that, that was actually it, it was I, it was my 60th birthday present from Norman wow. he gifted me with that when I turned 60 so it's pretty special to me wow. and it'll happen when it's supposed to happen I'm not worried about it mm -hmm. Except and Norman is like a it's like a surrogate father to me and yeah. we were very tightly connected and I love him with all my heart and, you know, we don't have, like, well, it happened again with Deadwood in the fact that you got to break ground, but we don't have a lot of TV producers like him anymore that, that broke ground with things, you know? So. I, I know. I know. And uh, that was seeing a lot of progress. A lot of people with disabilities, performers with disabilities that we didn't see 30, 40 years ago. So we're, we're, we're making progress in this industry. And we're making progress in movies because we had another actress from this movie that we're going to talk about that you were in. Yeah, we had uh, Lee Purcell on the show uh, not too long ago. Um, and she was in the film that you were also in called Carol of the Bells. Now, tell us a little oh, yeah. Yeah, Tell us a little bit about Carol of the Bells, Jerry, because, it, again, it's kind of groundbreaking. Well, it is. It's a wonderful story. It's a Christmas story. And uh, David Zimmerman, my dear friend, casted that show, that movie, and he suggested that I do this role. It was one scene, but it's, it's a great scene. And it's with R.J. Mitty from Breaking Bad. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, but David, I said, the scene reads that he sits down next to me in a crowd of people and we start a conversation. What are the odds of two people with cerebral palsy sitting next to each other just 
wow, <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's a highly unlikely day, but that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. It's well, true, but it happens in this movie. And I said, look, the only way I'll agree to do it is you let me be a nun. A nun? I said, yeah, then I won't have terrible palsy because I, I'll try to be real still and not move, I'll be in a habit, and he's sitting next to a nun. And besides, I've always wanted to be a nun, and, and this is on my bucket list. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so they allowed me to be a nun in this scene, and my dear, beloved sister Gloria passed a little over two years ago, and so I asked Joey Travolta, the executive producer, if I could name my character Sister Gloria. Oh, nice. So, you know, it, it, it's cool. I'm, and I got to work with R.J. Mitty, who I, who I think is wonderful, phenomenal. I think it's incredible that on your bucket list it was to do a nude scene and to also play a nun in another movie. <laughs> I, you know, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> See, I've been listening to your humor too much. <laughs> Wait a minute. I, I, to be in a nude scene was never on my bucket list. Oh, okay. It was just something that, it was something that was put in my trailer, and I had to consider it. And I said, okay. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, growing up Catholic, I wanted to be a nun, and I, I wanted to play actors of God in the play. I wow. wanted to, I want, you know, and that never happened. So. Um, I finally got to be a nun in Carol of the Bells. I, my dream came through. And then how did it turn out for you? I mean, what was it like as fulfilling as you thought it would be? Or? <laughs> well, I have to tell you, I'm very diverse, which tells me that I have a range. See, I, at least I've proven I have a, I have a range. I can be a stand-up comic, I can mm. be a nun, I can be That's right. a jewel and deadwood with rotten teeth. You know, I, who knows what I'll do next? Right. You never know. Right. Well, you know, I wanted to, I, I, one of the things that I love about you, Jerry, is that uh, you've actually said in interviews in the past, you take everything in stride, and you've said in interviews in the past that you actually consider the fact that you have cerebral palsy to be have to been a blessing because things have turned out the way that they have for you. Meanwhile, there's a lot of other people who, you know, they have a hangnail and, oh, my God, the world is fucking ended because they're in so much pain. Uh, so in knowing that you had this disability and that you were, you know, dealing with that, growing up with it, how did you ever get inspired to or get the idea to do stand-up or become an actress and what did your peers around you say or think about that? Did you have support, or did people say, oh, come on, Jerry, you can't do that? Well, of course, there was a lot of that discouragement. But truthfully, I started a pen pal relationship with Carol Burnett when I was about 12. Wow. And, I, and she wrote me back every time. And I told her that when I grew up, I wanted to be just like her. And I wanted to make people laugh, but a good laughter, where people are laughing with you, not yeah. at you. And I went to the Carol Burnett show for the first time when I was 16. And I was in the studio audience in the front row when she wore the curtains and went with the wind. I was in the audience that night. Right. And, and that was when I met her for the first time. And, you know, she always told me, don't quit getting into acting in every capacity. She told me there was no guarantee that I would become professional. There's no guarantees in life, period. The important thing is to put out the effort and to try. So, I, wow, I mean, like I said, my blessings never end. When I think about the encouragement from Carol Burnett, to a little kid with CP who was struggling to find herself and figure out what she wanted to do with her life. I mean, wow. Well, you know... I am so blessed. They, they say that in comedy is pain because you have to know pain 
to know comedy and to be a comedian in the same way with being an actor it kind of crosses that 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 experience and pain helps now in, in deadwood okay you had that great scene everybody talks about this allison talked about it too i keep referencing her to where you were made fun of by the town and, and they were being really, really bad and it was really shocking. And, and did you bring back any pain you had from your childhood? Because I know you said you were picked on by other kids in that. Well, the, it was interesting. There was a scene. Do you remember the scene when I was walking through the mud and I fell in the mud in the middle of the street of Deadwood and right. nobody would help me out? Right. Yes, yes. Well, well, I filmed that scene 12 times, it seemed like 20, and they kept telling me to go back and do it again. I thought, what, what am I doing wrong, you know? Oh, How can wow. you fall in the mud well, yeah. you know? And so what I didn't know was there was an actor that David Mills called over to him in the last scene that I, that I filmed, the last time that I did it. And he said, look, we're not getting the response that we need from Jerry. And for some reason, she's not reacting to this, to people staring at her or not helping her. There's no reaction. Mm -hmm. I want you to get in front of her and make fun of her horrendously and mimic her, laugh at her. And that was only done that one time. And when he did that, oh my God, I was shocked. I reacted. And what I realized what had happened, why he couldn't get the reaction before that, is because in my mind, I have built blinders yeah. so, that, so that I can walk, so that I can deal with life. I don't see half the stairs and and I'm hearing impaired so I don't hear half the remarks and I never wore my hearing aids because when I wore my hearing aids then I would hear mm -hmm. and, and so I think a lot of my self-confidence came with blindness I had to blind myself from the reality to have a self-esteem if that makes any sense Sure. Yeah, definitely. Wow. Well, it, it was definitely so, a powerful scene. Well, sure. when he did that, all that pain came back in an instant. Yeah. I remembered all the times and kids made fun of me, and, and he got the reaction. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what, what about the actors? I mean, when, when it was over with, did they feel guilty? Oh, he felt so bad. He came up and hugged me. He said, I am so sorry. Oh, please don't. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay. Wow. Even Ian McShane. When Ian McShane, whenever he did a scene with me where he treated me badly, he would come over to me after the scene and hug me and say, I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I don't know why people... <laughs> it's acting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, I have to ask you, Jerry, about the uh, the cast of, of Deadwood. It's a great cast, and you were reunited with them after, you know, 13-some years. Uh, specifically, I wanted to ask about, well, A, Timothy Oliphant, who we found out from Santa Clarita Diet is hysterical, too, but also Ian McShane, because, you know, he, he's a great actor, but in everything I've seen him in, in Deadwood, even in American Gods, he's very intense. What is he really? Yeah. What is he really like in person? What is Ian really like? He is the sweetest. I mean, it is. It was the most supportive cast I have ever worked with. It was just phenomenal. And to come back with all of them, you know, that many years later, it was surreal, dreamlike. In fact, I made my singing debut in Deadwood. Yeah, and. I'll tell you a secret. I think I said this publicly, <laughs> but I had to sing the song "Waltzing Matilda." Oh yeah. Okay, I had never heard it before, and nobody really thinks I sing that well. <laughs> <laughs> and and I try. I kept trying to sing "Waltzing Matilda," and we kept drumming over and over, and I'm. 
singing it with Ian McShane's character. We're singing it together. Right. And I kept, I kept screwing up the lines. And at one point, when the camera started rolling, I decided, oh, stop it. And I started singing, it's the bitchy side. I'm the And Ian gave me a look. <laughs> There, there's nothing like the look in another actor's eyes when you start improving. They get that glazed look. Well, the, the funniest part of the whole thing is that when they used the final take, you know, I had to redo it. I had to, you know, I had to sing Walter Matilda. But when you see the movie, that look on his face wasn't, the look he was giving me with Walking Matilda, they kept the look he gave me. I love that, and I love when you when you dance because you just wanted your your operation and wear your braces, and 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 you, you convinced him that you could dance. You know, that was yeah, a nice thing. You know. I don't know what it is about Hollywood, but they like to see me dance and sing. I don't get it. That was <laughs> neither one of those who were, were on my bucket list, but I've done both now. No, no, see? I danced. I danced and sang in Fast of Life, my first episode of Fast. And you know what? Yeah, absolutely, you did. And and you're so multi-dimensional. And and I know you were on Sesame Street. Did you get a chance to dance with Big Bird? Uh, no, I roller skated with Big Bird. Oh, that's with, even more. Wow. Yeah. Well, it, it was kind of it was interesting because the producers called me up and they said, you know, we want you on Sesame Street, but do you have anything that? You know, besides stand-up comedy, the kids can relate to. Right. What do you do the kids like? Uh-huh. And I said, I said, well, I can roller skate, roller skate. Wow! And you know, the minute that left my lips, I thought, wow! Not only do I have cerebral palsy, but I have mental health issues. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you you lied? Did you lie to them? I mean, you couldn't roller skate. You told me no, you- no. I did have a pair of skates as a kid, but I never learned how to use those rubber tips. So oh. my brakes were a tree or a car or anything, <laughs> a tree is something to stop. What made me think that that was going to change on Sesame Street is beyond me. Yeah, because that just and it would have totally blown children's dreams everywhere if you would have knocked over Big Bird because <laughs> you, you had to get him to stop you. Well, what happened was, the night before when we rehearsed, um, Big Bird was on his skate, but Wardrobe forgot mine, so there was no rehearsal for me. Oh. They didn't bring me, they didn't bring me my skate until we were in front of the live audience of families and their four-year-olds. Mm. And they put on these skates for the first time, and with no rehearsal, I... Dated out on stage and said, oh, fuck, I don't know how to stop. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I knew that either I was going to hit the camera, and I knew intuitively that that could be pricey. Yeah. Or I could, or I could skate into the audience and hurt someone in the studio audience, and no, I can't do that. <laughs> so I figured in my mind the best way to stop is to run into Big Bird. He'll, he'll, he'll stop me. There you go. I, I hit Big Bird so hard <laughs> his head fell off. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh. And, and his head rolled across the stage, <laughs> and these, and these four-year-olds were so traumatized and screaming that I killed him. Oh, my. <laughs> Oh, that's great. That's a great story. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure these four of us are still in therapy today. Wow. 
<laughs> and and to think that you've done uh, you've done other children's shows like the Great Space Coaster and everything too. So you must not have ruined your reputation by <laughs> by doing that's incredible. <laughs> that's incredible. My God, I anything horrible like great Facebook you know, you know I read on I read on Facebook I loved one of your posts because I I guess in fact I would you know if I had any film credits you go on eBay and you search your name and and you found an 8 by 10 of you that you had signed that some dealer was selling and it was like really expensive and you didn't know whether to get it or not right yes yeah yeah. Well, you know what you should have done? I'm, let me tell you. Let me give me a little hint because I'll tell you how those eBayers work. Because I may not be an actor, but I'm an eBayer. <laughs> Just get a hold of the guy. The guy's obviously an autograph dealer and say, if you give me that picture for free, I will sign you five more to sell. And that way you can get it for Ooh. free. <laughs> there you go. Oh, I'm going to do that next time. <laughs> they, they come up every now and then. Every now and then I see a picture of me that I've never seen before. And it's like, wow. Yeah. Do you ever see any fake Do you ever see any fake autographs? Does people sign your name for you? <laughs> uh, it would be really hard to mimic my autograph with TV. You try. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm amazed to know you could roller skate. I think you probably could have rode that horse. I really do. <laughs> right. Well, we Although don't... Although now, with, with the iPad, you just go and they consider it an autograph. Yeah, that is true. absolutely. That is true. Well, we of course don't want to uh, wrap up this interview without mentioning uh, the fact about your book, uh, which I know we mentioned the last time that you were on the show, but uh, your book, I'm Walking as Straight as I Can, it, is it still available? Is it still in print? Oh, yeah, it's still in print, but I am writing another book now uh, because, you know, a lot of years have happened since that book, 11 years of stories. So hopefully in another year or two, I will have another book out. Well, that I, is I'm wonderful. working on it daily. Yeah. Well, good. So see, we will probably have you back on before another six years because we'll have you back on when the new book comes out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you better have me on before six years, you guys. Definitely. <laughs> and I wanted, to, I wanted to take a moment, Jerry, to wish you a happy early birthday because I know you're a fellow Virgo. Uh, Terry's birthday. Terry here. His birthday is on September 10th. Yours is on September. Oh. Yeah, yours is on September 13th, and mine is on September 21st. So we're all within a couple of weeks of each other. Because I saw on Facebook you were saying that you were cleaning up your apartment, and then you cleaned up your your Facebook page because you're a Virgo. Because <laughs> <Yeah, I did. laughs> that's what Virgo. Yeah, and, that's a Virgo trait. It's it it's terrible, isn't it? Terrible. We got to keep all the pictures. Got to be straight on the wall. And, <laughs> It's a terrible. Yeah, I, I get really upset when a picture is not cropped right. Or, God, I can do that better than that. I mean, especially... <laughs> yeah, Virgos are, are meticulous. Yes. It's especially hard when you're a Virgo and you're you're particular about things and pictures on the wall that are crooked drive you crazy. And then, like you, I also have handicaps, and then we realize it might be us that's leaning straight or... <laughs> Not so straight, and maybe that's why <laughs> the the picture's crooked. Yeah, but in my case, all I have to do is lean sideways, and it looks fine. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Well, er everybody loves you. I'm going to tell you how much everybody loves you. I mean, if you just see your Facebook page, everybody is 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 always there to help you. I mean, you were talking about how you had a computer problem, and right away you had somebody want to come over and help you fix it and everything. And, that's very very cool that it, you've like touched people in so many ways that people just you're, you're like the nicest person in the world jerry oh thank you thank you absolutely well so you follow me on facebook huh yes yeah? yes i'm that stalker that <laughs> speaks up once in a while <laughs> are you a troll are you a troll <laughs> So I, I went to post on Facebook and and you were talking about being a Virgo and I, you know because with the spell correct because I used the iPhone and it always corrects how you're spelling and I tried to tell you in a comment that I was a Virgo too but it came out and said I'm a virgin and it, it, it didn't because spell correct you know so 
You probably thought I was a crazy stalker. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> all right. Well, we want to encourage all of our listeners to make sure to check Jerry out online. You can head over to our website at jerryjewel.com. Uh, the last name Jewel is with two L's, jerryjewel.com. And a G for Jerry. And a G for Jerry. Uh, and uh, if you haven't already seen it, check out the Deadwood movie and uh, Carol the Bells. And we all look forward to the next book, Jerry. Oh, thank you. Well, there's, there's some irons in the fire. I just can't talk about it now, but there's some really exciting things happening right now. And if any of them are roles. They're probably going to name you Jerry or Jewel because you always get named some or part Ger of your... Geraldine. Yeah. <laughs> that one hasn't been used well, yet. Yeah. <laughs> my my next role will be my middle name, which is Anne. No, there I'm you kidding. go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, all right. Well, I want to thank you so much for spending so much time with us this weekend, Jerry. And uh, I'll let you go so that you can go hang out with Juliet because she's still pissed that you're ignoring her. <laughs> I'm so sorry she did that. I, I love it. Understand. No, we love it. We actually okay. we had it. We had an actor on uh, John Grise, and he has a parrot who screamed and talked during the entire interview, and he was mortified. And we were just cracking up. We're like. This is real life. It's live radio. We love it. It's fine. <laughs> well, as long as we know your cat oh, loves you. Because I didn't know if your cat was <laughs> loving you or you, you had fed him and he wanted to eat you. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you again. Everybody check out All Jerry's right. website. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great rest of your weekend, Jerry. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye.